Today I'm doing something that's a combination of fresh and preserved and you may switch some of these from being fresh to preserved when you make it at home but it's a good example of how you can make something taste really really good by just adding a few fresh things and still relying on convenience. So the first thing I've got here is a, a big pot because it's cannellini bean soup and I'm going to add two tablespoons of olive oil. I'm using a flavorful olive oil. Uh, you could use uh, a different kind of oil, anything that is not going to smoke on you too much. We're not, we're going to add some other things to it. So smoking shouldn't become an issue because some of the water is going to come out of the vegetables. I'm going to throw one of these in and see. Not quite where I'd like it to be. Uh, this is also going to be a soup because of the beans and because of the carrots and because of some of the other things we're adding. It's going to be really high in fiber. So if you're interested in looking at that aspect of your diet and boosting that a little bit, anything you use with beans is going to do that. But this one's got a lot of beans in it, so it's going to do it very well. I've got basically one large onion uh, or two cups is what it measures out to be. So we'll throw those in there. And then I've got two cups of diced carrots. We're going to add those to the pot also. And we're going to stir these around for about five minutes, uh, letting them uh, just saute. We want the onion to become transparent or a little translucent, I guess, more than transparent. Uh, so stir it from time to time and uh, about five minutes uh, will do that. While that's happening, you can make sure you've got all your other ingredients ready to go. We're going to have some break times in there so that if everything isn't ready when you first start, that's fine. That'll save you a little bit of time as long as you've got the time during the prep that you can dedicate to this and not having to go check on the kids or uh, bring in the newspaper or something like that. Whole cooking time should be close to about a half an hour. Okay, we don't want the onion to brown, so we just want it to get this nice, lovely, translucent color. It is a fairly mild onion, uh, not an exceptionally sharp one, uh, but you could use a yellow onion or a white onion. The onion, uh, the carrot, uh, the garlic, these are some of the components that we're adding that are fresh. Uh, that may or may not take you a little bit of time to get ready. Both of those or all of these things are things that you could do earlier in the day so that you could shorten up uh, the length of time it takes you to get this, this ready. I've added the garlic to that. It was two cloves. I'm also going to add a half a teaspoon of dried mint and a tablespoon of cumin. Now I want to get a little bit, these are obviously preserved as well, so we've uh, switched from the fresh to the uh, preserved items here for a, a little bit. Um, I'm going to stir these around together before I add any of the other ingredients just so we get some of the uh, toasting uh, on some of those ingredients as well. Now, interestingly, when you first put these in, the first thing that I smell uh, as it goes in is the mint and that is really predominant and then as it uh, cooks around for one to two minutes before you add other ingredients, uh, at that point you start to begin to smell the cumin much more predominantly. All right, we'll assume that I've done that for about a minute or two. And now I'm going to add to this a quart of chicken broth. Now you could make this vegan if you wanted to use vegetable broth. I don't have any problem with that. What I would have a problem with uh, is if you use something that's really high in salt, like water and a bouillon cube. That tends to unbalance the flavors a little bit. We are going to add some salt later on, however, so if you do do that, then just eliminate that salt and make sure, if possible, that you use unsalted beans, just not to throw everything off balance. Also going to throw in there two bay leaves. Now these generally take a fair amount of time for the bay flavor to come out and actually start enhancing the, the flavor of the dish that you're working on usually as much as an hour. So because it takes that long, I'm adding two. If, this, if we were going to simmer this for a longer period of time, one would probably work. And then I've got three cups of beans. Now these are the uh, cannelli beans, which it's named for cannellini beans, excuse me. Uh, and these were canned beans. So that was about three cups. You could use your own homemade. You could make your own and freeze them. This would be an excellent use for that as well. Uh, we're going to bring this up to a boil. And when we get it up to a boil, uh, we're going to turn it down and, and uh, let it simmer for about 10 minutes. The thing we're going for here is to make sure that the carrots have gotten tender. They're the slowest thing that's going to tenderize. The beans are already cooked. The onion pretty much got taken care of uh, during that sautéing process. So the carrots are, are our limiting factor. So it may take you 10 minutes, it may take you 5, it may take you 15 to get the carrots down to where we want them to be. So time it by testing carrots.
Okay, after your carrots are pretty close to done, uh, stir in about a quarter of a cup of couscous. Now the purpose of the couscous is actually as a thickener. Many times in soups we use cornstarch or flour as a thickener, uh, but you can also use things like couscous in small amounts. So a quarter of a cup for eight cups of, of broth uh, works out fairly well. If you want a little thicker than this, you could add a little bit more. You could also smash a few of the beans uh, if you are so inclined. All right, at this point, um, I'm going to add uh, some seasoning. I'm going to add a teaspoon of kosher salt and a half a teaspoon of black pepper. And then the last of our fresh ingredients, which is, let me see, two cups of packed spinach leaves. Now, packed spinach leaves uh, would equal about four uh, cups of loose spinach leaves, somewhere with three to four cups. So go ahead and pack them into a measuring cup. Again, this is a soup, so the exact amount isn't as critical as it is with some things. Um, but uh, these really add a lot of flavor. You could add frozen spinach uh, if it was uh, packed in, a, in really tightly in a cube and you've uh, gotten a lot of the water out of it earlier. It's not so critical that you get the water out of it at this point, uh, but you don't want to leave it in a big block or it's not going to thaw uh, as it goes in. So you probably want to thaw it before you add it in. Last thing I'm going to add a little bit more freshness to this. This uh, is a tablespoon of fresh lemon juice. And this, of course, is going in at the end of the other ingredients because lemon juice is acidic and it's going to prevent the other things that we've added from getting tender. So that if we added it really early in when we were trying to soften up those carrots, it's going to slow everything down. So that's all that's going to go in here. And the last thing we're going to do is serve it up. This makes a great main course soup. It's full of protein, full of fiber. I think you need to add this one or at least try it in your winter repertoire uh, as the season goes along. If you've got some fresh parsley, you can sprinkle a little bit of that over the top. Looks really, really pretty. Lots of color, lots of flavor. I hope you'll try it. It's cannellini bean soup. For Oklahoma Gardening, I'm Barbara Brown. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.